This is Chase from Beyond Unbroken, and you are watching Richard Metal Fan. Hey, what's up, guys? Cool. Episode 213 of Richard Metal Fan Interviews, calling from Zoom, and I'm here with Chase Cantrell from Beyond Unbroken. How are you doing today, Chase? Doing good, man. Doing good. How are you? Not too bad. Not too bad. It's a lovely afternoon here in Georgia, where I'm at. So how is it over in, I believe you're in L.A.? I'm in Vegas, actually in Vegas. Oh, Vegas, yes. Vegas, right? Because yeah. I I know the rest of the band's based in in Cali, but you're in Vegas. Yeah, yeah, they're out of uh, they're based basically out of Temecula, California, and uh, yeah, I'm out here in Vegas, so uh, you know, I make my way out there as much as I can, and that's kind of where we do all our work out of is Temecula. Yeah, because I actually did my research. I heard like Temecula is like in between like Los Angeles and San Diego. It's like yeah. right in the middle. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I was actually going to mail something to uh to a uh, Monty, but there was like an issue like issue with like ma mailing it because it said like address the unknown. But so, but then the stuff got mailed back to me. Oh, huh? Yeah, I don't know. Huh? Yeah, uh, yeah. I I, maybe I should try try doing Brian mon mon money to see if that works. Because I had it yeah, Monty yeah. money. I was um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That's a bummer. Yeah, <laughs> I hope that all yeah. works out. Yeah, yeah, but you're in Ve Vegas, which is cool. I've actually been to Vegas twice. I actually, there was this uh, festival I went to called uh, Psycho Las Vegas. There had a lot of like black metal bands and death metal bands. It's a really cool, yeah. pl cool place. Yeah, yeah, Vegas is great. That's actually, you know, that's a <laughs> festival I've I've missed twice. Uh Shame on me, because there that is an awesome festival. I don't know if they're still doing it or not. Yeah, yeah. They, I, for some reason, they canceled it this year. Here, I went last year. I saw like Merciful Fate, Emperor, for a lot of great bands. Yeah, that uh, that Emperor set that that broke my heart a little bit to miss that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've been on my bucket list for years. Like I've been because they were like one of my gateways into like black metal metal when I was like like a wee bloke. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and seeing um, the yeah, seeing their uh, set was like amazing. It was like um, a it was like yeah. a once in a lifetime thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, Anthems to the Welkins at dusk, I believe, is what it's called. It like that album, like was like mind blowing to me back in the day. Yeah, I like that, but I also consider like in the Night Side Clips, like like a classic along the black metal genre, mm -hmm. along with Dave Mysterious, Dom Sathanis, or even uh, no fuck, what is it? Oh yeah, Transylvania. Banian Hunger by Dark Throne. It's just yeah. pure heaviness and evilness. Right. Yeah. 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 I kind of wish I wish the foods and drinks weren't expensive, but what do you expect? It's fucking Las Vegas, right? That's what I heard. I heard it was one of those deals like $18 tall boys or something like that. You know, one yeah. of those situations. Yeah. So, but I know I, I was actually rooming with a buddy of mine and he actually just hooked, hooked, went to like some like cheap, like little local like dr drugstores like a Walgreens or something to get some some beers to save save me save us some bucks. Um that's kind of the way to go man. Actually like even down on the strip if I'm down there with my lady or with some friends or anything I'm I'm like let's hit up these Walgreens. Let's not pay these strip prices if we're going to, you know, have a drink or something. Let's go get a tall boy there or something, you know. <laughs> it's cheap. <laughs> Hell yeah. So yeah. uh, kind kind of like the the format of of my little show is I want to do like a rundown of your discography and talk about your musical history. So take it back yeah. to young Chase Kentrell. So kind of growing up, what were the first bands that got you into metal, and what made you want to start playing drums? Um, I mean, if I take it all the way back, like uh, I probably Ozzy Ozzy Osbourne. My uh, my dad used to always blast uh the ozzy no more tears album you know when we'd be driving in the car or something and as a just a young kid that just that heavy music it just put itself in my blood and then uh you know as i got older from there you know discovered the metallicas the panteras and stuff and i really just was just enthralled in the heavy music from a young a young age <laughs> nice nice said uh, so so we're so I was like doing my research. I believe the first thing I want to talk about was in 2018, you did something called a chili trooper for tell me about that. A uh, chill trooper. Yeah. Chill that trooper. Was, um, yeah. Yeah. That was um, just a little project that I did. Um, it was uh, all written and recorded by me, a friend of mine uh, named Patrick Ward, shout out, great friend of mine. Uh, 
he helped me record it and kind of produce it all. But it was just kind of a, uh, you know, honestly, I had just gotten my own little recording set up and I just wanted to, I play guitar as well and do vocals and all of that. So oh, I just really? wanted to, as it was almost like a test of my new little recording setup as well as like, could I write and record a little EP all by myself? And so, yeah, that was, that was kind of what, how that came about. And uh chill trooper uh, has kind of been like another, you know, like a little side project that I've had on the back burner that one day I want to get back to and do some more stuff with. Cause I, I really liked that. That was really cool. It was really raw, really punk rock. It's cool. Yeah. So you also play guitar too uh yeah 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 so what came, uh, what came first guitar or, or drums uh drums definitely yeah. uh that was um that that i started playing drums around 12 or 13 years old um kind of all started as a uh as a uh a trick to get out of class in school my friends were like you know if you join marching band you can uh we you get out of class man and I was like, well, I'm not going to do it unless I can play the drums. And uh, I got on the drum line and actually just like became like enthralled with it. And it became my life. <laughs> yeah. 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 Do you like remember like the first like drum kit that you bought? Uh, yeah. My folks actually bought it for me. It was a, um, oh my gosh. Uh, first act. First, it was a first act drum kit. Um, just a little small I don't even know, small kick drum, one tom up, one tom down, one cymbal, one little hi-hat. And uh, that was it. That was kind of what I started to, that's how I, what I figured out the basics on. Yeah. Yeah. And do you remember like the first song you tried to play on drums? Um, <laughs> Actually, I do. The first one that I ever uh, kind of picked up was uh, Love in an Elevator by Aerosmith. <laughs> yeah loving an elevator yeah i remember yeah. that i remember that song i used to hear that a bunch when i was a kid yeah i remember that was kind of the first song where it was like oh like i can maybe do this like i this sounds like what he's doing you know yeah yeah and then you mentioned you also play guitar so where did guitar sort of like come come in place where you made you decide hmm, i want to try that too um you know I want to say even before I got my first drum kit, uh, I had gotten a guitar for Christmas, but I never really took to it, really. It kind of just sat in the case for years. Um, you know, just being around friends that played and I kind of saw that like, oh, I can do that. Actually, Mike and Brian as kids, when I when I moved from Tennessee to Las Vegas as a kid and met Mike oh, and wow. Brian, a lot of like the little guitar noodly things that I figured out were from watching them learn guitar when we were kids, like 16 years old, 17 years old, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So you, so you were actually from Tennessee, like, like you were from Nashville. Um, yeah, I can't, I'm kind of from everywhere. I was born in Denver. Uh, my dad's family is from Tennessee. So I, we had moved out there when I was real young and I basically grew up in Tennessee till I was, uh, 16. Uh, a town called Crossville, Tennessee, and uh, Crossville. Yeah, and uh, my mom's family is all West Coast, Vegas, New Mexico, uh, Colorado. And when I was about sixteen, we relocated to Las Vegas, and um, it wasn't long after that is when I met Mike and Brian. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So, so I've only been to like Tennessee a bunch. I've been to like Chattanooga. I saw like there's like this venue I've been to called The Signal. I don't know if you've yeah. ever heard of that. That mm -hmm. that and there's it's actually cool. I actually saw Kill Switch Engage there. I saw Wage War, Gojira. Uh, oh, it, it feels dude. like a little like warehouse kind of. Yeah. But yeah. it was like the old spot, but I heard they moved to a new location. Mm hmm. Yeah. I've uh I've heard of, I I've never been, but I've heard of it. Uh, I heard it's you know, they, they have pretty decent sized bands, um, there. That's kind of, I've heard it's kind of the equivalent to, um, there's a place called Marathon Music in Nashville. I've heard about and that. And I've heard it's kind of, yeah, I've heard they're kind of the same, uh, very similar, very similar yeah, place. I've been to Nashville a bunch. I've been to this, there was this tiny, I haven't been to mar that Marathon venue, but I've been to this, uh, tiny ass venue called The End. 
if that place oh, is yeah. like crammed. I'm very familiar with the games. Like I remember yeah. seeing my buddies in Carnifex play, and I saw like last time I was there, I saw the Acacia strain. Like every time, like because time I go there, like the show's pretty much all sold out. Now I'm like like squished like a can of sardines. Yeah, man. The uh, dude, some legendary shows have happened at the end, man. The end is a, is a great place. I actually had gotten to play there a few times with a old kind of garage punk rock band uh that i was in out there called the graces uh we we played uh we played the end two or three times i think while i was in that band yeah cool and spot then, and yeah and i've also been to a uh, bridgestone arena i saw iron maiden there back in 2019 that's still one of the best live shows i've seen yet i bet yeah yeah that's yeah. awesome yeah, but then I guess going because go, like you mentioned, you've also played guitar. Do you like in a way kind of like express yourself like differently creative, like playing guitar versus when you play drums? Uh, yeah, you know, I mean, there is for me there is kind of a a difference. You know, I mean, guitar there's obviously melody uh, included in it, so. I don't know. There's just a different vibe there when I'm playing on a guitar drums. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's just more, I guess, beat oriented. I, I don't know. It doesn't, I've never written a song just dr starting with drums. If I've written a song, it's always started with guitar, you know? Yeah. I can, yeah. like, that's where the melody, the vibe comes from. And then for me, drums would come later. Yeah, yeah, and a lot of people say like drums is just a rhythm based instrument, but I still think think that's that is a true because I feel like you the way you can like play drums sort of like reflect like an emotion that you're like feeling at the time. Most definitely, yeah. I mean, the, not to say yeah that there's not emotion in drumming. It's it's a different. I guess for me, it's just a little bit of a different feel. You know, there are drummers out there. They're like Terry Bozio and stuff that, you know, those guys are on a whole different level. They could probably create some different emotions and feels beyond our that are beyond our wildest dreams those guys are insane <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah like i've seen like some of his his work especially like i know he played a couple some songs on one of corn's albums and he's just an very in my opinion very underrated drummer i should say yeah you know i mean he is and he isn't you know he's in the <laughs> drumming world i mean he's a god uh but you know i guess to the to the more general public i guess you know i don't really know where they would know him for i get you know zappa of course i guess he played with zappa um wasn't he was missing persons too i'm not 100 percent sure i don't know his whole history but uh it, wild man on the drums for sure <laughs> agreed and then kind of like going next up i want to talk about is nosferatu in 2020 tell me about that oh, okay so that was actually um that's one of my good friends, uh, Mike and Josh. They um, they used to create music out of their bedroom, and uh, my friend Mike, uh, he hit that was kind of his group, Nosferatu, or like his his project, and uh, he had written a song and um, wanted me to basically just kind of put drum or play drums to it and do like a little video with it and everything. The song was already written and everything. And uh, so I just basically did that for, you know, did the, we filmed like a drum video for it. I don't know if you'd maybe seen that. I, I'm sure maybe. Yeah. yeah. I think I saw like a clip on Instagram. You're right. Yeah. But um, so uh, we did that. And I also did like some vocals on some of his tracks, uh, just kind of guests, guest spotted on his tracks a little bit um great guitarist uh out of uh he's i think he's actually out of st louis now i think he left uh nashville so um yeah if anybody's out there and want to check out some cool stuff check out nosferatu they're on he's yeah. it's all on spotify yeah and i kind of like how you spell it like nosferatu but with like the number two instead of like because yeah. so, every when i obviously it's named after like that that silent horror movie mm-hmm which I I never knew that was from, like a movie because I remember seeing like it was like at the end of an episode of SpongeBob where it had the the villain and he was like responsible for like flicking yeah. the lights on and off. Right. Yeah. 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 That's and then I discovered later that I was like, oh, that's actually a real. I thought it was like made up or something. No. Yeah. Yeah. That was an old, cool old movie. I I've really probably only 
honestly, I've never watched the thing all the way through, but just the visuals that you see, like the classic visuals of the Nosferatu, that's yeah. a, a wild, wild looking character. <laughs> yeah. And then 20 and then 2021, you did uh, false passages. Tell me about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, so that was with um, some friends of mine out of Nashville, uh, uh, including the uh, bass player of an old band I was in called The Graces. Uh, we, um, we, uh, it was just kind of like a little project we did. We didn't really do much with it. It was just a couple songs we wrote together, uh, recorded them and put them out online and that was actually kind of right before I moved back to Las Vegas from Tennessee. So we, we did that project and I kind of came back to Las Vegas and that's kind of where the beyond and broken story for me kind of starts. Um, it was kind of a short lived thing. Um, but we got some cool tunes out of it. Oh yeah. And so how did you get to know the, the money brothers? Like what was like your first impression of them? Um, well, like I said, we'd known each other since we were kids. Uh, I moved out to Las Vegas from Tennessee when I was about 16, and I actually found them, uh, I found Michael and a friend of ours named DJ on, uh, Craigslist. Um, I just put out an ad, you know, just a kid look, drummer looking for a band, and they responded, and we met up, and, uh, it was me and Michael and our friend DJ that had a little band together. But uh, Michael and I became really good friends. And, you know, Monty was his big brother. So we always just all hung out. And, um, you know, we were, you know, even besides just music, we were like getting into mischief together, you know, like that's how kind of far back it goes with them, be even beyond music. So, uh, yeah, we've been friends for a while. Um, we, um, that, you know, while Michael and I had our little band, Monty was forming Escape the Fate with his buds. And, yeah. uh, you know, they, Escape the Fate took off. And then Michael, you know, kind of went and did his thing with them. And we kind of really didn't talk for a long time. Probably like, whew, it might have been even like, eight to 10 years maybe. And somehow Michael had found out that I came back to Vegas and uh, reach out to me and uh, said that they needed a drummer beyond and broken. And that's kind of how it all full yeah. circle came around. Yeah. Yeah. It's cause it's like you and Ashley are now like the two new, new members of the band band. Did you like know Ashley before you joined? Uh, no. Uh -uh. Um, I think it, you know, it might've been like the second or third time that I, came down and jammed with him and everything uh michael said that he had found someone online uh of some like app that you find band members off of I, I don't even know what it's called but uh he showed me her video and stuff and it was like hey he's like cool bring her on down and uh we eventually got her in there and it worked out perfect she's oh yeah she's great yeah. Well, yeah yeah what was like your first impression of her were you like hi i'm chase uh <laughs> yeah yeah you know uh just hey how's it going you know uh i think uh she had actually came down once before uh i actually got to meet her so they 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 had uh got to meet her once before i did and when I came down, I think we, I think we jammed, ran through the songs. Uh, you know, I was even still kind of fresh to it all too. So, so I was still, you know, you know, kind of learning as well. Uh, so, you know, she didn't come in much longer after I did. So. Yeah. Because I thought you yeah. both sort of like came around like the same time. Pretty much. Yeah. It wasn't much, much of a time difference. Yeah. Yeah, and so when you joined, like, Beyond or Broken, did you only to try to bring something new, like, rhythmically to the band that they all didn't have previously? Um, well, you know, when I joined, uh, I kind of came on more so as... A, when Michael approached me, he kind of approached me as... Uh, they had a, a, a show at a festival here in Vegas coming up. And... Um, they needed a drummer for it and uh he asked me to do it said yeah um we started rehearsing for it 
And unfortunately, and or when we got Ash in, and unfortunately that festival got canceled. Um, so, you know, it, that show just kind of got ripped out from, from under us. And, um, so that's kind of the, how I came into the band. And after that is when we kind of started doing more like, uh, music video type of things. And then where I started to kind of get more creative with them, uh, a lot of the songs and stuff that we've kind of been working on or that kind of have kind of involved me were already kind of demoed out and I kind of just like uh, come in a lot of times just like kind of add my own flavor to what they've already kind of had demoed out. Um, honestly, we haven't like with me and the band, we, we haven't worked out a totally like original idea spawned from just us and them yet. Everything that I've kind of worked with them with has been a, a demoed out idea already that was kind of um, laid out somewhat. Yeah. Cause I know like the first thing I I've heard was uh blood on my hands, which I believe that was like your first like thing you thing with them. So what was the recording process like for that song, the writing and all that good who stuff? Um, well, honestly, that was, that song was actually, um, was actually done when I came into the band. Uh, the, the, they had that, that was done. Like they've had that song for quite a while. And, uh, so I kind of just came in. I was in the video for that song. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, um, you know, that was one that, you know, that when I came in, it was like, this is going to, this is our new thing right here. Check it out. You know, it yeah. kind of gave me a good idea of where the, the direction of the band is going now when I heard blood on my hands. Cause I knew beyond and broken's catalog, uh, when they asked me to come on down, I started listening to it and everything. So I knew kind of what it was before. And when they showed me blood on my hands, it was like, oh, okay. So this is, this is where we're headed. You know, this kind of direction of what that is now. And so now like, that's kind of, you know, I kind of feel like blood on my hands has a little bit of a different feel than some of the stuff that they had done before. And my, uh, you know, my, I'm kind of, looking in the direction of the style of blood on my hands now of, is kind of the direction of the band right now. Yeah. Because in it feels head. like that the new, that, that, that song in sugar sounds a lot more heavier and a little, has a bit of a darker tone than compared to some of the other songs. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's, uh, yeah, most definitely has that, those feels for sure. Yeah. But, um, but you know, what's cool about beyond unbroken is that, you know, pretty eclectic you kind of you never know which direction <clears throat> we might jump in you know uh if you listen to the back catalog you know there's 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 hip hop -y stuff in there you know so you know you never know what we're gonna pull out of our out of out of the bucket you know <laughs> yeah i'm really looking forward to that i've still listened to blood on my hands i think it i love like the the, the vocals between like Mon monte and michael with monte singing and then michael screaming and i was surprised like because i think i was the first time i've heard michael scream. i was like holy shit his vo vocals are fucking brutal they're brutal man in person when you when he does it in front of you it's like oh my god <laughs> like it's it's powerful he's 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 got it. <laughs> yeah. And I know like Ash is sort of like doing like backing harmonies. I, and I know like when I interviewed Mon Monty, he says like, you're, you're actually singing as well. Yeah. Yeah. On, uh, on the, um, on the newest Andromeda, uh, collab that we did, I had you caught, I'm sure you probably I did, caught I did that. actually, which had like the AI thing, thing with like Monty, yes, with, like yeah. AI and shit that I thought that was fucking awesome. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I actually, I'm on that, uh, vocally. Yeah. We're all on it. We, we all collaborated and got the vocals together for that song. It was really cool. That was fun. Yeah. I feel like you guys should take like a kiss route or sort of the Beatles route where you have like a song where each member sort of like sings a lead vocal. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be into it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Put that yeah. out into the universe. <laughs> yeah. And, and that has to be hard, like drumming and singing at the same time. Um, yeah, it's, it's not, easy <laughs> i'm still i'm still working every day at it um but uh it's fun i dig it yeah I've because been... i i always see like like aaron from under oath brandon from atreyu yeah. you, you even mm -hmm. chris from uh autopsy i'm sometimes wondering like how the fuck did they do both at the same time 
Yeah, those yeah, those guys are masters right there. Uh Braun from Mastodon. Oh, yeah, you know? I could add like, him too from my like, hometown. Dude. Uh yeah, yeah. It's like, dude, like uh we saw them uh, was a couple months back with Gojira and uh I just was enamored. I was like, dude, how are you playing this stuff and singing so good? <laughs> Get, yeah. get out of town <laughs> like it's so good yeah he's amazing like i always see him at sh whenever i go to shows in atlanta he was always i always see him sometimes oh really yeah yeah because last time i saw him i i think i was seeing cannibal corpse gojira Ra no wait, i can't count gojira gore guts it's uh mayhem and blood incantation at, at this venue called the eastern and he was like walking around there that's cool that uh that they still hit up the local local scene like that yeah. yeah it's mostly him and uh brent hines i would see at shows pop up at shows sometimes nice cool that's yeah. awesome yeah yeah and, and of course with like the new new beyond a broken music so what's the status with the new album i heard like when i interviewed monty he says you're gonna release like a, a new song soon like what's the status with that um so pretty much uh sounds like we're gonna just be kind of putting out uh put out a single let it let let it uh sink in for a while then do another one let that sink in for a while till we get enough built up and then we'll put it all from my understanding we'll be putting all that up as a full thing yeah full yeah yeah i know like a lot of people would 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 complain saying like like if you release like five songs already that's already like half the the album and it's sort of like i don't know it's hard to describe sort of like keep like the the hype going i guess mm -hmm. this what's your thoughts on that um, I don't know. I mean, I, I kind of dig the formula of, you know, putting something out for putting some, putting something out, like, well, kind of like what we're doing, put a, a single out, let people enjoy it for a while and let it build up to a next thing. And then the next thing, uh, you know, I don't know if, you know, I love the, the old school idea of, of putting out albums and it's a whole piece and stuff like that. Like there's, there's something to that, that is, you know, it will always have my heart, but I just think this day and age, uh, people's attention spans are boom, boom, boom. And you put a big, big grouping of songs out like that, you know, uh, will, will that, will they forget about them in, in, uh, two months and be moved on to the next thing, you know, uh, no matter how good those songs are, people's attention spans that, Will, will they will they stick with it i you know maybe i'm wrong i don't know i just i feel like the that formula of releasing something and then letting it go out to the people for a little while and giving them something else and something else it's it keeps attention better i think nowadays yeah um, i think i don't know maybe i'm completely wrong but i i uh that's kind of my thoughts on it at this current moment in time <laughs> yeah and kind Although of like I, yeah, okay. you're saying. Uh, I was I was gonna say, you know, who doesn't love like, you know, like uh, an awesome album LP that's all put together. You open it, up, you know, who doesn't love that though? So I don't know. I'm torn on that. Yeah. In a way. And kind of like I want to talk about like sort of like the right sort of like right writing process, so like your approach to drums. So so when it comes to to, to playing drums, because like a lot of people like say like the drums is sort of like like you keep as a drummer you gotta keep like the beat and then the tempo otherwise it just ends up as like a complete bloodbath so when it comes to p writing and recording the drums you usually have like the whole like pattern written and the rest of the band writes to that or do you usually need to hear what the guitars are doing to order to lay down your parts in the beat oh yeah i mean i would definitely you know if I'm writing drums, I need the guitar riff. It's a, it's, the, it's all, for me, it's all about the riff. Like what, what it, I've got to bounce my, my ideas off the riff, you know? Um, so, so yeah, I've, I, like I said, I, I think I was saying earlier that, uh, yeah, I've, I've never written a song with drums first. I've always needed that inspiration from that riff for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Do you ever worried that 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 you're gonna get be like off time when it comes to like hearing like the riffs? Uh, no, not really. I, um, you know, it. I guess you know depends on how complex the riff is. You know, if you threw a Mashuga riff at me, I might my brain might be thrown <laughs> for a loop. You know, 
But uh, you know, for the most part, I, I, I'm pretty pretty in tune when somebody throws something at me. Nice. Nice. And sort of like in the end, what's next for Beyond the Brook? And I know you mentioned you're working on new music and I'm hoping you all like, like do like touring soon. Cause I really would love to see yeah. you guys play live. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's definitely the, uh, that's definitely the goal. Uh, I, I wouldn't want to like put a timestamp on when that is or anything. Cause I don't really know. I don't, I wouldn't want to put that out yet, but that's, that's the goal is to get out there to the people. Um, I know that, uh, you know, right now we're just we're just getting getting music together, getting getting the content, getting the content for the people. Then we get out there and and uh, and rock and roll. You know. <laughs> yeah, because I know recently you had "Blow Up My Hands" play on that Sirius XM. So how awesome was that to like hear your song on the radio? Oh, dude, that's like, uh, I mean, that's just awesome. Uh, you know, to be a part of something that is. Uh, you know, I've been listening to Sirius XM, you know, who, for a long time, you know, to be a part of something that's on there. It's like, whoa, this is cool. For the first time, you know, I'm like, it's, it's like, wow, that's that's really happening. <laughs> yeah. Pretty yes. cool. People, people want to hear us, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, yeah. That makes me happy that you are starting to get like recognition and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, even something like this, like it's. It blows my mind that someone wants to chat with me for a little bit. You know, I'm just a yeah. regular dude. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And now I have like half the band. I just need to get like Michael and Ash, and then I have the whole band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then who knows? Maybe when you all have like the new album out, I'll get all four of you all together for an interview. That would be awesome, man. For round I would, two, uh, I would love that. That'd be cool. Nice. So, uh, thank you, Chase, for taking the time to chat with me. It was great to be able to learn about your history. It's just any final words you want to say to the viewers that are watching this to close this out. Um, man, just uh, just keep keep checking us out. Keep uh, keep keep your finger on the pulse with us because we're doing cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we love you guys. Thanks a lot. Awesome. So everybody, Chase Cantrell from Beyond Unbroken. See you next time.